Hi everyone, welcome to Sew Against the Grain. My name is Mona and this is Dasha, my cat assistant. And in this video I'm going to talk about everything that I sewed in the month of July. So there are two things that I sewed in July that I don't have pictures of yet, so I'm going to include those in the August um, video where I talk about what I made in August. Um, but the first one was a button-down shirt for my boyfriend, and the second one was a pussy bow blouse from a free pattern that I made for myself, which turned out really cool. So as soon as I take pictures for those, I'll post them up on Instagram, and I'll include those in my video for August. I sewed three garments in the month of July. The first one is my bug jar dress. So this is the By Hand London Anna bodice and a gathered dirndl skirt on the bottom. And the fabric is this really cool kind of ocean blue color fabric with these little mason jars with lightning bugs in them, which is so super cool. Um, I really like the fabric. I really like the way the dress turned out. I included some solid color yellow ribbon at the very hem, which I like to do when fabric is really super busy. Um, so I really like the look of that dress and I've worn it a couple times since making it. Um, it also has some yellow piping at the neckline instead of a facing which I love to do especially recently. Um, I've been kind of over facings so that's been something that I've really enjoyed doing on the last couple of dresses. The second dress that I made in, in July is a space dress and this is another by hand London Anna bodice with a gathered dirndl skirt on the bottom and I made this specifically for a Neil deGrasse Tyson lecture I'm going to in October. I thought a new space dress would be kind of cool to wear. Um, so really simple. The fabric is definitely the star of this. The fabric was from Joann's as well. Um, it's really the star of the dress and I think will be really great to wear when I go see a lecture about astrophysics in October. The third dress I made was a Sew Over at London vintage shirt dress. And this is the first time that I've made this pattern and I really, really liked it. So I made a size 16 at the shoulders and graded down to a 20 at the bust. And I changed the sleeves because I'm not really a fan of um, three quarter sleeves. So I made them into short sleeves and I put a little band at the bottom of the sleeve, which I love to do on puffy sleeves. Um, so because it's a shirt dress, I think it has nine, a total of nine buttons down the front of it. So I made the buttons that are on the dress and they, the color is this beautiful kind of blue with a golden shift kind of color. And and so this is, these are buttons made out of resin from molds I made from vintage buttons that I own, um, which has been something I've been really interested in doing recently. So the buttons turned out really great. I'm really happy with the dress. I'm actually working on my second version of the vintage um, shirt dress pattern, which I really love. It was really easy to put together. It has such a, a nice classic vintage look. I've been on the hunt for kind of the perfect shirt dress pattern. And I think with a few modifications, this one will be it. The bodice was a little bit short, especially in the front, so I'm lengthening the bodice on the next one. I definitely like the shorter sleeves better, but I think otherwise it's a nice collar installation. I love the little um, gathers on the shoulders. I put piping uh, between the seams of mine. Um, I think that it's just the, the size of the collar is really nice. The way it looks when put together is really nice. Um, I might try and make um, change up the shape of the collar a little bit on a future version but overall I'm really super happy with it um, and I'm really excited to make some more of them. So I didn't do a ton of garment sewing in July but I have been working on some other sewing projects. Um, I'm really excited to be able to tell you that I'm going to be attending and vending at my first craft fair ever on December 1st. So I am planning on taking a couple of different things with me to the craft fair. So I'm going to be taking um, several of the handmade buttons that I've been making. So I've been packaging those up um, on cards for purchase. So I'm going to bring buttons with me. But then I also wanted to bring something that uses the buttons that is kind of a finished product. So if people don't sew or crochet or knit and maybe might not be interested in purchasing buttons, I wanted to have something that they would... Um, they might be able they might be interested in purchasing that's completed so what i decided on and i was testing the pattern and making a different million different versions of it but what i decided on doing is kind of a little button pouch um, so it's got a handmade button on the front and it's got this little kind of rounded flap it's lined on the inside the construction is really straightforward and easy and then i included some machine embroidery on the back 
and a little lobster clasp on the side so that it still kind of uses the buttons that I um, enjoy making. It's a really easy sewing craft and this might be something that people are interested in purchasing. So I was working on um, a ton of different iterations of this pattern and I think I have it down to where I'm really excited about it. I think this will be my final product. So I'm planning on um, making a bunch of these um, with buttons and embroidery on the back to take to the craft fair as well for people who um, are not interested in buying buttons for sewing purposes or crafting purposes. And then the third thing that I'm gonna take to the craft fair is gonna be some um, handmade resin jewelry. So I'm planning on making some more handmade brooches. Um, and then I also want to um, finalize a process for some resin necklaces as well. So I really wanna replicate, and I'll put a picture up so you can see what my inspiration is, but I really wanna replicate those necklaces that were on Lucite, uh, big link chains from like the 1940s and the 1950s that have um, little, usually like Bakelite or acrylic dangles on them. And it's like a novelty necklace. They usually have like fruit or um, animals or bugs or stars or some kind of decoration on them. So I'm hoping, and I should be able to do it, to be able to use resin to make um, the pieces that would actually make up the necklace and I'd be able to attach them to a chain. So um, that's kind of the next step for craft fair preparation is to figure out the process for doing that that um, makes a lot of sense and I can do on kind of a larger scale and then taking some of those with me as well. So in addition to the craft fair, um, the last update I have is that I have put some of the buttons that I've made recently into an Etsy shop. Um, so it's called the Outlaw Heart Shop and the name is from a Tiger Army song called Outlaw Heart and it is um, like a Western song that is basically about an outlaw who is on his way out and kind of regretting that he hasn't um, he's not able to spend any more time with the woman he loves and that maybe he's not like the greatest person for her. So it's a really neat song. Tiger Army is my favorite band. Um, I also like the name because it can really kind of be anything from like a, a shop perspective. So I could sew and this would be a good fit. I could make buttons and this would be a good fit. I could have resin jewelry and this would be a good fit. So it's not something that's super duper specific to what I'm making, but it's still kind of cool. And I love the Old West, so Outlaw Heart Shop is just great for so many different reasons. So I'll show you a close-up of this particular set of buttons. So these are some purple glitter buttons, and this is the card that I put them on for shipping. So it's got some washing information and some care information. So I'll include a link to the Etsy shop in the description below, but um, feel free to take a look at it. I'm really excited um, that I got something up there. It's been something I've been thinking about and working on for a while. Um, and then if you have seen any buttons I've made on Instagram or here on YouTube um, or anywhere else that you're interested in purchasing that you don't see on Etsy, definitely let me know. Um, I also have a ton of flexibility in how many buttons are in the set. So because I'm making them, it can be one button or 30 buttons, a different pattern, a different color. So if you see a particular style of button that you like, that you want um, different in some way or more of or less of, definitely let me know and we can figure something out. Um, but if you want to take a look at the Etsy shop, um, I think there's nine sets of buttons on there right now. I'm planning on adding some more because clearly I've made a ton recently because I've been really into making the molds and then making the buttons, which is part of the reason for doing the craft fair and listing them on Etsy. I just have a lot of buttons that I've made and it's time to move some of them out. And if I can do that in a way where I can make a little bit of money to continue um, to buy materials to make more buttons and make more resin pieces and do more with sewing, then that seems like a win-win for everybody involved. Um, I get to share some of the things that I've made, but then also have money to um, spend on things to make more stuff, which sounds like a great deal for me. Feel free to take a look at the Etsy shop if you're interested, um, but I will be back in the month of September to talk about everything that I sewed in August. And Dasha and I wish you a wonderful day and we will see you in the next video. Bye. I'll include the link to the Etsy shop. Feel free to take a look if you're interested and I will be back in August to talk, nope, 